So, you want to learn how to speedrun Shadows of Evil with the new and improved Gun First trademark strat? Then this is the place for you, mate. This strategy allows the player to get their first gobble gun before completing the first beast which opens up to the rest of the speedrun. Why would someone do this over the beast first start? How much faster is it? Scotty, how do I even do this? All these will be answered in this video, so watch all the chapters until the end to not miss out on any key information, as it is all critical to completing the route as intended for maximum efficiency. I would recommend using a detailed timer which allows you to see the rift split as it's really helpful to keep track of small time when you do that part of the run. Well, I know what you're thinking. How in any way is hitting the gun at the beginning of the run slightly slower than these first? Well, let me explain. This is a variation of Gun First, which allows the player to keep up with Beast First in terms of speed and lets us manipulate in-game spawn mechanics significantly easier. So, let's do this. 1. Less resets for a run, and more potential runs on average per hour. Number 2. It fills in wasted time from the start of the speedrun. This is because the pedestal needs to spawn in, and it takes 6 seconds to spawn in, so during this downtime we are hitting the gun. Number 3. There's no delay on the waterfront pedestal interaction, which would be a problem for the old gun first strat, and it would usually lose 2 seconds. Number 4. There is a more consistent round end, which results in a better manip. There is also better round 1 end consistency and round 2 end consistency for the minute. Number 5, it allows for fast rifts, which make up the 2 second time loss, which essentially makes it the same speed as Beast First. Firstly, we need to be narrow. Duh. Once we load in, you are to run, open the spawn gate, and hit the gobble gum. Here you will play one of two gums. Raindrops, the gobble gum that spawns all of the power-ups on the map, or Dead and Nuclear Winter, which spawns a nuke power-up. For sake of ease, I will be showing you how to play Raindrops first. You then need to run back to where the crate is and pop the raindrops exactly when I do and on this line show. The drops will spawn with the nuke on the right side and you are to run through the credit and grab the double points. Jump and shock the gate, then turn around and ignore the drops. Melee the summoning key box, then run to zap the pen, jump over the bridge and then check the canal's code. Continue to the badge box and hit the rift, then the final zap. Grab anything in sight when leaving the beast mode for extra speed, then continue by grabbing the nuke and credit. Okay, let's stop right here for now. How are y'all doing? Are you following so far? Good, because we're about to get complicated, so bear with me. I'll do my best to explain this part as it's so important to get a good rounding consistently. Okay, so what is a spawn zone? Essentially, a spawn zone is an area within a location, such as the junction, where zombies can spawn from. The junction area comprises of three large spawn zones. To simplify this, we can call these zones Zone A, Zone B, and Zone C. Zombies will be registered into a spawn zone if they are on the map. So, a zombie can exist in Zone C by the stamina perk, but be in a different spawn zone to other zombies and more importantly, the player. What does this mean for the speedrun, you ask? Well, we cause spawns to exist in these spawn zones due to some spots having a large amount of active spawners, which tie over to other zones, e.g. spawns by Sam and spawns by Warfront Gate, even though you, the player, is only at the gum in one of those zones. Understood? Good. That's complicated but very necessary to know. At this exact moment, the game runs what is called a cleanup. What is a cleanup? This is what causes a despawn to occur, and universally it runs every 3 seconds after a set amount of time into the round has happened. Zombies have 3 conditions that need to be met before they can despawn. 1. They must be alive for a certain amount of time which depends on the round. Number 2. They must not be in the same active spawn zone as the player. Number 3. Player must not have line of sight of the zombie. All three conditions must be met in order for a zombie to despawn successfully. A zombie can't despawn if they are in your line of sight, even if they are in another zone and enough time has passed. So, how can we abuse this? At this exact moment, every zombie that meets the condition will despawn, which is really bad for our round end. A zombie can start to burn out due to the nuke, but then also despawn, meaning we need to keep line of sight for the entire duration of the nuke and therefore the burnout time. So what is a burnout time? The time it takes for a zombie to fully die after being nuked, which is generally random. We keep line of sight on 95% of the junction if we look towards the stamina machine through the wall. Doing this satisfies the condition of line of sight, preventing any zombie who spawns by the stamina machine to not despawn, letting them burn out fully. This is arguably the hardest part of the new start to get down, so everything else is easy. Trust me. 
The next part of the run starts after we grab the fountain pen. Here, we need to set up for a trick we call phone booth. You do this by placing yourself next to the pedestal and looking towards the stamina machine and entering the beast. We do this so you end up facing Nera's left you leave the beast mode. We are now about to perform a trick called wireless. Firstly, wireless is a trick that is more consistent on a high FPS than 160. You need to grab the grapple and move towards the grate and look down for higher frames. You then need to melee to get onto the roof, jump across the roof and line yourself up with the window, then look back and get the code whilst returning to beast. You need to spam scroll wheel and hold a right click to grab the grapple. Then move over to the phone booth and ensure the grapple icon is within this cross area. As soon as, and I mean as soon as, the grapple pulls back, you need to jump and let the grapple pull you above the stairs. This trick is all about timing and positioning to ensure it works consistently. And if you struggle with it, then it's a consistency problem and not the game. If you play nukes first, you will pop the nuke in the position of the rain like normal. You then go into B stay sap at the stam, then human grapple back. Once you land, instantly run to place the pen and start the ritual. Immediately pop the rain and let the drop spawn fully before grabbing the nuke. Then immediately run up the stairs into the top part of the Nero's layer. You may be wondering why we run up the stairs. Well, there are two spawn zone in Nero's layer. The floor, spawn zone A, and the stairs, spawn zone B. The active spawners by the KRM and the drop down near the entrance are not active if you run up these stairs, which means that the last two zombies will spawn in the floor area of Nero's Lair and the three surrounding barriers. You need to wait three seconds for two zombies to spawn in, then run down and look for the last zombie slash zombies. If you have two, kill one of them, but make sure you don't accidentally kill the last two early as you won't get a gum hit for free. Grab the worm and as you leave, depending on the spawn you get, throw a nade or shoot the last zombie as you leave. This is in order to maximise the amount of time we have to enter the waterfront rift before the tip. Why is this important? We avoid a despawn tick if we can make it from the top of Nero's lair to the rift in 42 seconds or less. This means no zombies across the whole of the spawn in the waterfront area can despawn, which results in a much better manip than if they accidentally despawned. If you played nukes first, you then play the top spawn after starting the ritual and wait until all the zombies have spawned into the map, then run down. Clear them all and pop the nuke near the stairs and grab it as you leave. You do need 1750 for the wall power gobble gum on the KRM and the door to the waterfront district. The same despawn logic will apply. We get zombies in spawn because we leave the playable area when we get the symbol and the belt in beast. Zombies everywhere will despawn on the 42 second tick after the round end. The exception to this is zombies who are breaking a barrier. This zombie will be a normal spawner, which we have no control over sadly. I will touch on what to do with this zombie later, but he's not important right now. You will need to rush to get your second gum hit, if it's ABH you reset, and then open the waterfront gate. I'm going to play a non wall power second gum hit, but I'll explain how to play wall power second later. Also please consider subscribing and liking the video, this helps me out a ton. Anyway, enter waterfront beast and do the normal beast route. Grapple to the belt and jump across this gap to get the symbol. For reference, the zombies will start being forced to spawn in spawn here because we are out of bounds. Get the symbol and finally open the waterfront gym door and return to human. Grab any zombie in the area for extra speed towards the rift and pick up the belt on the way down then open the rift door. If you have wall power, you need to look towards the gumball highlighted on screen so nothing out of this LOS will despawn. If you've got perks or nukes, then you can look anywhere. I like to throw my widows away here if you have them, but not the nades. So remember when I said the hardest part is over? I lied. The rift section done fast can be hard as you can't mess up and you need to be fast. I lied when I said the rift stops the tick. It just adds its own priority pass kind of tick, which is 17 and a half seconds after entering the portal. The game will then despawn everything. Why? I'll f no. But we can definitely abuse it. With this knowledge, we have to do the code insert, melee the box, and open the top gate in around 14 seconds, which leaves us 3 seconds to sprint across the rift to the minute. If you miss the initial 17 and a half second tick, the minute won't be as good. Okay now, let's do this. On touchdown, you need to run straight to the beast pedestal and input the code as fast as possible. Instantly melee the statue and continue upstairs. As you get halfway up the stairs, start to come back to human for maximum efficiency. Immediately run to the manip spot by the gum machine as shown. Hit the gum, then wait till 20 and a half seconds on the timer 
before you start to move backwards and pick up the gum. Grab the egg, place it on the pedestal, then kill the keepers so they count towards the progression of the egg. You need 12 to fill the egg, and the keepers count towards this. Remember the zombie in the barrier? Well, he's going to be lurking around one of the natural barriers, including the manit ones. So look around for him and kill him ASAP. Once he's dead, kill the horde, push the rant and grab the egg. Now, depending on the gum you get in your game, you will change how you play this part. Now I've decided to be a nice guy and give you examples of how you play this section depending on the gum you have before you enter. All variations included will be shown in chapter below so you can find any cycle you need specific help with. The order I will be showing them in is this. So skip or watch the full video for the footlight breakdown as well. As you enter the rift, you have hit the gum twice in the run, meaning that to get ABH guaranteed by the end of the footlight ritual, you need to hit the gum three times across two rounds. We manage these hits and doing the Easter request in a very specific and optimal way. You need to have wall power or ABH in hand leaving the rift. Wall power is used to pap the KRM and the location of the KRM in the junction is the most optimal to grab now versus later. The nearest is top spawn which you will use later if you get an early ABH put and you can't cycle your gums. You may get wall power third in cycle or far. This will dictate how many hits you will have to take at footlight. If you get it third, you have two more hits in order to guarantee ABH, meaning you play it slightly different. If you get it fourth, you have one hit at footlight, meaning you can hit gum and not worry about another hit. This would mean that you have hit twice in the rift to get wall power fourth, which requires a very specific sequence of events and timing in order to do optimally. So I suggest following this path very closely. I get wall power and I stop hitting the gum. Since I don't have nukes, I need to manually search for the barrier zombie and then end the round by manually killing every zombie. I have a nuke, so I don't need to look for the last, but I do need to hit the gum again. So you need to copy exactly the sequence I do to optimally end the round and grab your gum as you leave. Because I already have wall power in this scenario, all I need to do is double hit in the rift. Double hitting in the rift is much better than footlight as the footlight spawns are RNG and these spawns are much more guaranteed. This means that the timing of hitting the gum and leaving is much easier and consistent in the rift compared to the footlight area one. Leaving the rift, I need ABH. Or I would need to hit an extra time at footlight to get that ABH if I don't leave the rift with ABH in hand. If I pull an early ABH, then I won't get wall power until after I've used both my ABHs. Meaning that when I'm hitting in the rift, I need to be cycling to get my wall power gum so I can get the KRM. It is also important to get the perkaholic, so depending on which cycle you get, you can potentially be cooked by a late wall power if your cycle doesn't align, which is just unlucky. Now, the footlight section is simple if you follow all these exact steps. The round should end when walking up the mule kick stairs. I would advise you to remember the round end time for the rift, then adding 42 seconds onto this time. This will be the perfect time to get the manip in footlight. If you have wall power, you need to grab it now, as you want to have the care and pack a punch for the rest of the game before continuing into footlight. Here in beast, you need to open the box, melee the door and grapple up, then jump across and hit the toupee. Make sure to hug the wall to force spawns into spawn for a better manip. Hit the box, grapple to the theater and zap the door. Return to human and run to the gum machine if you do not have a gum. Then open the rift and loop back to the toupee and grab the gum you just hit. Depending on if you get ABH or not, you can ignore the second gum hit entirely. Place the egg in the holder and kill the keepers, then do the manip at exactly 42 seconds into the round. Stare at the wall for 3 seconds, then kill everything inside. If you need to hit gum, I like to clear the area and then wait till I get 10 kills in the egg and go to hit gum. I then come back to the egg and finish the souls I need, pick up the egg and then grab my ABH as I'm running towards the footlight gate. I then proceed to go to the burlesque and start the ritual. 
ending footlight round ASAP is so much better as you get a manip earlier and more spawns towards the eggs. I like to stare at the back window for a couple seconds, usually a tick, so I get a despawn tick and then I hunt the spawners in this close area that is just outside the ritual. Hopefully your round ends early and if not it's okay just make sure to push that round before you ABH. Congrats! You have made it through this video, but more importantly, you have learned how to speedrun the beginning 4 minutes of the most up-to-date Shadows of Evil strat. I am so happy you stuck around to the end and listened to my strategy, so thank you all so much. It means the world to me. If you would like more videos like this for, say, Origins, or any other map I specialise in, then comment them down below, and I appreciate any feedback on this video as I'm trying to learn and trying to get better at these tutorial videos, especially with Black Ops 6 coming up. So thank you all, and peace. Oh, and um, make sure to subscribe.